Hey there! So since last month, I've just been trying to really ramp up my work on Open Fire. Being able to watch other people play, I realized that the most engaging part of Open Fire right now is fighting the more difficult bosses. But here's the problem. I only had one boss available at the time. It was going to be a lot of work, but it also felt like ignoring a huge selling point of the game. And I also thought that it would be a lot more fun for me to work on the bosses instead of going through each of their little minions first. And I think by the end, I was right. I figured out a lot of work while I was doing this, so get some snacks and your favorite weapon, cause today we're going to be talking about boss fights. But wait, just a moment. Before we even open up Godot, I started with making all the animation sprites in iSprite. The whole time I was watching some really good YouTube tutorials about making pixel animations. I want to give each boss at least three different attacks to choose from. I also wanted them to generally have some sort of idle animation, though I haven't done them yet. I want each boss to also have a movement animation, a lose animation, and the winner animation for when you're defeated. But for now, let's focus on attacks and the idle. So first up was Tony, the big leader boss of the Red Mafia Town area. I decided that I should really push his proportion into that comic booky kingpin type of proportion. Also had a general idea on how I wanted Tony to work as a boss. He's big, he's slow, and he goes for the big hits. I wanted this main gimmick to be about breaking apart your side of the stage and controlling it. I wanted to reflect this in his different attacks too, so a simple punch, a big slam, and a special attack where he brings out the heavy weapons. In comparison, the Knight Arthur has a lot of very quick jumping attacks. He's not afraid to get up close and attack you, so his animations were a lot of jumping and slashing. Since I imagined him to be quite stoic, I decided not to even give him any idle frames, unlike the other bosses. I even flipped his sword slash animation to potentially let him attack you from behind. For his super attack, he stabs his mighty sword into the ground and calls forth holy meteor fire. Somehow. That looks fine. Before I talk about the other two characters, I wanted to say thank you to, well, all of you for watching my last video. You've also helped me reach 200 plus subscribers and that may not be a lot, but it is to me. If you like what I do, subscribe so you can catch more of my game's progress. And if you want to talk about something down below, why not talk about the current project that you're working on? Now back to the show. Here he is the tech expert of the group, and in all honesty, she's actually quite nice. She may fire her ray gun now and then, but she's very excited to try her experiments with you. So for this animation, we have her bringing out the Tony Stark Iron Man hologram schemes and summoning a little friend. But this is still a battlefield. If you dare hurt her friends, I hope you're fast enough to escape her wrath. Finally, Ali has very tricky and playful attacks. Ali can also summon traps off your side of the field, summon waves that attack you, and finally his ultimate attack is summoning a desert storm. So watch out for that. Now, animations are good and all, but I need to actually put these sprites into Godot. I don't know if it gets much better in 4.0, I do not want to update my script yet. But in the Godot docs, if you want to really tune your pixel sprite animations, they suggest that you use a combination of both the 2D animated sprite and the animation player. Which is fine by me, but having to manually insert each frame I'm going to use in the animation window just feels a bit counterintuitive. Oh well, I'm not the one making Godot. But for now, it's what I have going and it works for me. Adding in Tony wasn't too much of an issue, but then I suddenly realized the mistake that I made while coding him in. I haven't been utilizing inherited scenes. Let me explain. These bosses are very unique to one another, but underneath they utilize mostly the same programming. From a glance, they also have the same node structure, allowing me to fix things in my code quite quickly. However, if I tried to add something to Tony, say a new node, then I added his code to acknowledge the new node, the rest of the others will end up breaking. All of them start looking for this new node but only Tony has it at the moment. Sure, I just need to add the same node to all other bosses, that's just 3 more times. But that's not actually the case, cause I use the same base coding and structure for all of the enemies. What I should have done from the start is to use inherited scenes to streamline how I work between all these different enemies. Instead of going through each one of them to add a new feature, I can just adjust the base scene and all others will get the changes too. And even though these all inherit the same code and properties, we can still edit the different animations and variables and codes on their own scene. Most importantly, we can still alter some of the coding for making these guys move and attack over here in the AI behavior node. That out of the way, I lost a lot of time re-implementing a lot of the enemies but now all the bosses work perfectly out. Oh. 
As I've said, I wanted each boss to have a fun gimmick, and for Kiri, the gimmick was to summon enemies from her own region. These four creatures are the ones that you can find exclusively in the technology region. Although these characters work on their own, I was having a difficult time setting them onto the board mid combat. But this problem did not stem from the creature code anymore. The issue seemed to be between the move manager and the stage scripts. When I would place a dummy box before, I would do the whole process within the move manager, that is loading the instance, placing the child, and so on. Think of it this way, I have two boxes and I need to make one sandwich. What I'm doing now is bringing all the ingredients to one box, making the sandwich, then transferring the sandwich to the other box. Instead, I could just bring the ingredients to the second box directly and build it there. Now that's what I'm trying to do. That sounds simple, but I also had a lot of other functions that would be best if they were directly in the stage code. So in the end, through this hiccup, I was able to start optimizing my code better for the future. Oh, but the problem goes even deeper! Ali on the other hand has an interesting move of trapping the stage and limiting your movement, but in order to do that, I need to apply an effect on the tile, meaning to say I need to do something on this specific script node scene. I don't need to do any weird inherited scene shenanigans since all the tiles are fine, but the tiles currently have a list of sprites that will act as its style effects and even more, I need to fix up and utilize the broken tile mechanics. So a few new scripts later and I was able to get what I wanted. Let's get back to the bosses, hopefully they work now. Okay, so the attacks are executing weirdly. Even when we pause, the attack still goes through. What's happening is the character sends a command to the move manager, again the script from earlier. Then the manager processes the attack. The attack can then be broken down to three basic stages. Stage 1, we get the effective tiles. Stage 2, we set the timer. And stage 3, we deal damage. This is timed along with the animation. Which may seem weird, but it works for this kind of game, I think. If you have a better idea, tell me down below. But right now, the problem seems to be on stage 2, as I have only been using the create timer trick for Godot. However, there's no proper way to pause or interrupt these timers once you started them, aside from a super game pause trick, which I can't use. So instead, I've created a new auto-load script called the Master Timer. It works the same way as the old Create Timer, however this one keeps track of all timers made and returns the yield when the time is done. Now I can use a different function to go through all the different timers and pause them whenever necessary. I'm not sure if this is going to break for me in the future, but it's best to be hopeful and I need to keep working fast. Now, with new bosses, I felt bad that they all had the same kind of background, when they are supposed to come from lots of different places. So I decided that I should also go back and make different backgrounds for each region. Fix up the parallax layers, gonna make some new tiles in the future, and everything is working, but now I really wish I knew how to make better sounds, cause the game does sound quite empty without them. But I think that's it for now. Real quick again, I wanted to thank all of the new viewers. This is a very friendly reminder that if you like what I'm doing, maybe subscribe. I am planning on uploading a quick boss rush version to the Edge page soon for all of you to play. I am really trying to speed up my work since I have just a little bit more time on my hands now than before. This was really a lot of fun to talk about and I hope you enjoyed it too. So yes, I am the Noontime Dreamer, thank you so much for watching and have a lovely afternoon.